this is the data set I have for clustering. So it contains the data of uh, 260 cars. So this column gives the miles per gallon of the car. This one the number of cylinders, the cubic inches of the engine, the horsepower, the weight and the time taken to reach 60 miles. So this is our data set. Uh, so we had a couple of other columns as well. Um, so year and brand I have removed these columns since those are categorical variables and k-means clustering can work only using numeric variables. So I have removed those two columns. I have only the numeric variables now. So we are going to run a k-means clustering algorithm on this data set to see if we can group this data into different clusters. Okay, let's go to rapid miner and data. Okay, so now you can see that all these are numerical uh, variables. So why numerical? Because the calculation of k means is based on the distance calculation. So which can be done using only numeric values and not using categorical values. Okay. So once you have loaded the data. So this built a new predictive model we have seen earlier for classification and regression. For clustering, we use this option, find patterns in your data. Okay, by default, a rapid miner has produced four groups or four clusters. The count of uh, cars in each group is also shown here. So, as we have seen in the previous video, using R or Python, we can predict the optimal number of clusters using a scree plot. Now, in the absence of this feature in rapid miner Go, you will have to use your business judgment to identify the number of clusters. So like for example, you would know what type of cars your company deals with or how this data has been collected. Further, your business requirement may also dictate the number of clusters. So probably you will get a better idea once we try out a few values for the number of clusters. Now by default, we have uh, four clusters. So what we'll do is we'll uh, change the number of clusters. I click on this and select two. We'll start from two clusters. So we are forcing rapid miner go to classify the data into just two clusters now. Okay, two clusters of sizes 185 and 76 respectively. So what we'll do is we'll export this into an Excel. Okay, so I have got the clustering results exported. So this one, this is the two cluster data. So you can see uh, groups one or two has been marked for each of the records here. So I've done a simple pivot on this. So this is the pivot. So what I've done here is for each of the groups, I've calculated the average of each of the variables. So to get an idea of what sort of values are put in what clusters. So now you can see group 1 has an average of 8 cylinders while group 2 has 4.5 cylinders on an average. The other variables also seem to be quite related. Vehicles with uh, high cylinders have correspondingly high weight, high cubic inches, uh, less miles per gallon, etc. So now we will have to name the two groups so created. So it is up to the user to name the clusters appropriately or to identify what types of vehicles a particular cluster contains in this case. So let's name these two groups. So what we can do is we could say the vehicles with 8 cylinders are trucks and vehicles with 4.5 cylinders are cars. So I will be renaming this so. So this is going to be trucks. So this will be cars. 
So our clustering is complete. We have two clusters based on the data, based on all these values, weight, time to 60, etc. We have divided our data set into two clusters. The two clusters are trucks and cars. Okay, we are done with two clusters. So we'll try out three clusters and four clusters by changing the number of groups here, clicking on run. Once the clusters are generated, export it into an Excel. So I have collated all these results into a single Excel sheet. I have two clusters, two clusters pivot, three clusters, three clusters pivot, four and four pivot. Just going back to two clusters pivot. So we had 76 trucks and 185 cars. So 76 trucks meaning the cars with an average cylinders of eight. So similarly for three clusters, Cars with average cylinder of 8 comes out to be around 73 now this time. A reduction of around 3. It's a very, very slight difference. We can see that predominantly the other group, the cars 185 have been split into two groups now. 127 and 61 cars now. Now, uh, earlier the average of cylinders was 4.5 for the entire group cars. Now it has been split into two groups with four cylinders and six cylinders. So now, if we had to name these groups, what we'll do is probably, we'll retain the name trucks for the first group as earlier. So the one with four cylinders. So you can see four cylinders has miles per gallon of 29, but six cylinders has miles per gallon of uh, 20, which is a lesser compared to the earlier one, which is quite expected. Again, uh, the engine size is uh, quite bigger. The time to 60 is almost same for the uh, two types of cars. We will come to that. The horsepower is a bit higher for the one with six cylinders. It is also to be expected. Okay. So if we, uh, if we were to name this, uh, we will name this as probably compact cars and I will retain the same name as cars for the last group. So this is going to be our uh, three clusters now. Cars, compact cars and trucks based on all these data or based on the average of all these data which we have observed. So let's take a look at four clusters now. So four groups have been classified by the tool. I have created a pivot. So the 7.97, the one classified as trucks, there is no change. This is also uh, 73 this time as well. So I'll just name this as trucks now as well. Okay, this time there are three groups. Uh, so the group with 6.13 average cylinders, we'll take a look at this in the previous instance. 6.13. So six cylinders was around 61 cars. So this time six cylinders is around 53 cars, a slight difference. So probably what we can guess is the other two groups, group 1 and group 4, have been split out of the one with four cylinders. The compact cars group have been split into two clusters now. What I'll do is I'll just name this as cars as well, just like the earlier scenario. So we'll have to find appropriate names now for group 1 and group 4. Both groups 1 and 4 have an, an average of around 4 cylinders. So in our 3 clustering, we had called these as compact cars, cars with around 4 cylinders. Uh, we had around 127 cars which we called as compact cars. Around the same 127 have been split into 2 groups now, 70 and 50 almost comes out to be close. So these compact cars have been split into Two additional clusters now, both of which have on average four cylinders. So let's look at other parameters to identify if there is any difference based on which we can name the clusters accordingly. So group one has a higher cubic inches of the engine, a higher horsepower compared to group four, a higher weight, a lower time to 60 lower miles per gallon. So on the whole looking at all the parameters it seems that out of these two groups both of which are compact cars group one seems to belong to a uh, 
a powerful compact car category with a bigger engine capacity and hence correspondingly a lower miles per gallon. So it's a probably a compact car with a heavy duty capacity or probably it could be a sports car built for high performance. So probably we'll rename this as compact sports car and the other category as compact car. So this would be our four clusters in this case. Trucks cars, compact car and compact sports car. Okay, now we have seen three groupings. One with two clusters, one with three clusters and one with four. Now there is nothing right or wrong about each of the groupings. It depends on your business need on how you want to view the data. See, for example, you may be doing the clustering in order to formulate your marketing strategy based on the customer segments. So in such a case, four clusters may make sense since we could target compact cars for small families, sports cars for youngsters, sedans for large families or high income people and trucks for commercial organizations. But if you're looking for doing a clustering to decide what types of testing to carry out on the vehicles. Four clusters may not be needed. Maybe two is sufficient. The test parameters for all cars may be quite identical and but very different from those of trucks. So in this case, two clusters would be sufficient here. So in fact, more than a scree plot, your business case is more important to decide the number of clusters. So this brings us to the end of clustering section.